Yusuf, there's a song from Happy Ending that I enjoy very much. Yeah. Uh, Paji sees such a pussy cat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that line kept ringing in my head as I read the interviews you've been doing as you've done the promotions for the film, because you're talking a lot about your creative choices, you're talking a lot about um, now making choices that are not dictated by market forces, by wanting a hit, uh, by doing films like Omkara, Parinita, Being Cyrus. Um, do you think, at least in the last couple of years, when it comes to making these creative choices, you've been a bit of a pussycat? Yes, I think so, completely, yes. Um, <laughs> Also, you know, there was a headline recently saying, I'm done doing films for hits, which I didn't mean. I mean I'd love to do films for hits, you know. Um, it's just that, uh, I guess, as versatile as we'd like to think we are, there's a kind of niche or an area which um, I'm liked in. And uh, I'd like to do more films like that, rather than, you know, I mean, I've worked in the past with filmmakers um, like Sajid and Tigmanshu Dhulia. This is what people mean by, um, you know, perhaps making mistakes, but this is one is a director of an award-winning movie like Pan Singh Tomar, one is award-winning, I mean not award-winning, but a kind of a reward-making, ridiculous, um, you know, comedy films like Houseful, which were funny. Um, I think more than uh, Bullet Raja, people perhaps um, were, were concerned and disappointed as at the choice of film with Hamshakas, which is, you know, perhaps a little unfair. I'm, I'm sure Sajid did his best. I, I think if your intention is to try and do good stuff, um, all of us have niches and spaces, and it's fine to try and be something that you're not sometimes, but uh, I wouldn't want to make a habit out of it. But, Seth, then how does Happy Ending, which right. puts you back in that niche of uh, urban, sophisticated, slick-looking comedy, how does this stretch you as an actor? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a director's medium, and um, the choices you make as an actor define you, but I mean, the creation of all this is the director. And Raj and DK have written a wonderfully fresh script. And while it's familiar territory in terms of colors and vibe, um, it's a rather different role in, in the sense that it's not only age appropriate and apt that someone who's done a few romantic comedies should play this part, but um, it kind of is a romantic comedy about romantic comedy. So it's a layered movie. There's a lot going on there. Um, there's also a lot of vulnerability to the character, uh, which I think is important, which all too often in romantic comedies, it's hard to really feel for the character because he's got everything. The only thing stopping him really is some kind of lack of commitment or some kind of phobia in his mind, which is not necessarily very relatable. Self stardom uh, seems to me like this very intriguing blend of hubris and insecurity. Uh, you know, you have the position and the power to get any film made, and yet you want to retain that success, and so you might be too insecure to take the risks you would have done if you were less successful. So how do you balance these things? Well, I don't know. I think I'm really lucky because I don't think I am so successful um, who, uh, that, that it's like a, you know, a crown that I'm afraid of losing or something. I've not, never really been in What's that, that position. You can get any film made. You, can, you green like movies. Yes, uh, and that's a little frightening, and, and, uh, but it's the most enjoyable thing also. Somehow I find myself in a niche um, which is pretty unforgiving because, uh, you know, I don't get often, often of, uh, sort of offered masala movies that are made on a. And most of the films I'm doing are, are quite, uh, if I say, real, um, or judged on international standards. You know, I mean, I don't think I'm successful enough to be scared of don't any be, change. Don't be trapped. Yes, yes. You know, I think I've always had, you know, a film like was Parinita or Omkara, and then there's a Salam Namaste. I think I wanted to do act in, uh, you know, big hit films. That's what I meant to say that. You know, I said, okay, let me work in this movie because I think a lot of people would like that kind of film. But now I think, uh, having learned from that, I would like to be true to myself, no matter how uh, big or small that world might be, and make more films like Omkara and Parinita if it's possible. Because I don't want to only be an actor who, uh, you know, has, has worked in acclaimed films that haven't run at the box office. So these are films that are respected in retrospect. So you learn from that, that it's a mix actually of two. You know, you, so have to balance you have to balance it, and maybe it got a little out imbalanced <laughs> recently. But um, the careers I look at around me that I've respected, or the ones that have had longevity, are people who've been strong at the box office, but have also encouraged other kinds of cinema. Like who? Well, like my mother, you know, as the first example I can think of. Um, 
you yeah, know. she did really you unique know, She kind films. of in, encouraged Bengali cinema, was true to her roots and got a lot of respect from her people for that. Um, and at the same time was a saleable box office star who could have only done that, um, but didn't. You know, and time is money and time is a precious commodity for actors. So to spend three months, four months making a film means you must be committed to that idea. So if you said in an interview that um, you don't watch a lot of Hindi movies right. and you said, frankly, there's not a lot to learn from that them. Was a, uh, um, that was a wrong comment. I mean, there is a lot to learn from them. I, I apologize you, for that. Are you I retract. I offer, I, I, hey, you know, I, I'm not the, you know, uh, the Supreme Court judge or something. I mean, I can retract. Don't take me too seriously. But I think what I meant was a kind of defense to say it actually started with my mother being in movies, and I just didn't like the idea of watching her crying in all these, all her films were so emotional, and there's somebody like in Mossam, there's the young girl being raped in the forest. I mean, this is not films for kids to see. Um, uh, so I kind of didn't like the idea of watching too much emotion in movies. I would rather watch American films. I found them more entertaining. That Clint Eastwood shooting people would be um, less emotional. I would hear the TV playing like a Doordarshan film. There would be, uh, you know, the classic Hindi film, Mum, and this, sad music playing, she'd be like, beta, and I'd be like, no, no, you know, I, I, need, a, I need something else. Um, so it started there, and then it went on to, uh, when I was working in films, I found it very all-consuming, you know, uh, and we went through our 20s and 30s talking nothing but film and, you know, drinking whiskey till five in the morning and passionately discussing each other and movies and gossip, and then, you know, I. I feel after a long day's work, it's therapeutic for me to watch like Hercule Poirot or you know a just nice English else. TV show, just something, and just switch off and not compete or, or constantly think about because it, it you you wouldn't be able to help worrying. I mean, if I was to watch how amazing Rithik Roshan is looking all the time, I probably wouldn't be sleep properly. Yeah, I'd be so stressed out thinking oh, I've got to go to the gym. Or better, you know what I mean? You have to f stop thinking about these people after a point. But do you think also is there an element of Despite all these years, you've been here for what, more than 20 years now. Are you still somewhat of a misfit? Are you still too anglicized for Bollywood? I mean, maybe, uh, but what's happened is I'm comfortable with it and I'm fine and I like my world, you know. And it's not um, a peanut job. I mean, they still pay you lots. So there's, it's a proper, you know, uh, star's salary, um, which is nice. It's, it's somebody was talking about you know Govinda and my, my being so different in Happy Ending. I said, but isn't it amazing that we're in the same movie for a change? Otherwise, normally we'd be in two different types of films. So that's a maturing also, or, or you know, interesting it's opportunity an absolutely. Yeah, of, of, of films. Um, but I really feel, and sometimes I wish I'm strong enough to stick to this conviction without retracting it later as well. But if I, it's important the kind of people I'm with. I mean, we live in a little flat in Bandra. Some people have come home, like-minded people. You have dinner, you chat, you talk about a movie. That's how you go through your life. Um, with like-minded people doing lovely things. And if they say, you know, you're only going to make 90 crores in your movie, you're never going to make 200. That's okay also, I think, you know. As long, I mean, that's not bad. It would ni be nice to make 100. It would be nice to have a big hit, but... Um, you um, made your piece. Yeah, and it's important to have, um, you know, the correct, I think atmosphere, the way you live your life is very important. The people you're surrounded with doing this interview rather than, you know, talking to another channel. Uh, but this is something I'm comfortable with and I'm happy with. Um, I think that's important too, you know. You said somewhere that I want the mind of a 40-year-old with the body of a 20-year-old. That would be nice. But even a 40-year-old, maybe that would be more apt for me to I'm so aware of getting, um, you know, older. I see actors that are older. I, I, I just feel, I feel this is the peak time. It's lovely, the 40s. You have a sense of history, you know. Um, I'm aware of death. I lost my father. And so I just know that's where we're all going. So... Um, you matured. I, I hope so, but I'm, I'm saying maybe this is more apt for somebody who's 60, 70 to say, I wish I had a body of a 20-year-old, because a 40-year-old's got a great body also, you know, it's not that he's packed up or he's like very old. I, in fact, joke with my wife sometimes saying, look, that woman has 40-year-old arms because they're super toned. You know, when you see a woman looking unbelievably good, she's it, it is unbelievable. <laughs> some, she's had some help and, and the arms are like, you know, really toned. You watch it a lot on American television. The, I call them the 40-year-old arms, you know. <laughs> they're, they're much better than the 20s and the 30s. <laughs> you, you talked yeah. about Karina Saif. I always somehow see pictures of the two of you at the airport. Right. You're going yes. somewhere or you're coming back from some sort of impossibly glamorous location. I, I keep telling her she's got to stop 
publicizing some it's not it's once a year we hardly take listen holidays. so my impression of you guys is that this is what you do yes it's the full-blown movie star life even at home you both professional look, holiday yeah no, no go on no, yeah. no you just look stunning i mean no matter what your jet lag situation and how long the flight was both of you just look amazing and so some, I, i picture you at home sort of sipping wine in these beautiful clothes listening to jazz is this well, you're not to wrong the you know uh, they're not beautiful clothes it's probably a kurta pajama <laughs> but there is good wine and there's good jazz there's a balcony that's very small sometimes you have six friends seven friends over and they all fit on that tiny balcony and i always remember if we move to a bigger place um, that i hope we don't lose the intimacy of this flat because um, the people who like each other always manage to fit on that balcony in the most incredible nooks and crannies you know it's not there's so many glamorous homes but i'm digressing somebody came home unannounced the other day or actually we'd call somebody home to play court piece which is a baby form of bridge and we forgot that they were coming we thought we'd cancel so we were under the you know um, we were on the ottoman under the jeppri razai watching this poirot thing and they came over and so karina was like oh no i'm i'm really upset because you know i'm not i'm not dressed up i'm in my pajamas and a t-shirt so i said you know did you did you think that people think you're normally uh, well, resplendent <laughs> so we had a laugh there i mean this is because we're quite you, normal does she ever have an ugly day I, i don't think it's ever an ugly day no but it's a it's a natural day you know without makeup and she looks great without makeup i i i think so there is no ugly day thank you no no you just made I, the rest of us feel I'm so i'm sure bad. you don't have an ugly day <laughs> no, i do no, i do sure. i don't think so i don't think so so it's not a full blown movie star life 24/7 uh well no not for us i think that's why we like each other because it's not i mean part of it is i mean you know especially today this um cameras everywhere and somebody commenting on what you're wearing or what you're doing but but we try and keep it as normal as possible it's really important um i think i benefited greatly from having parents who uh you know growing up i didn't hear films being discussed so much not that that's a bad thing but since it's a it's a fleeting thing it's not going to last forever it's important to build your foundations on things that will last like friendships that are not based on uh, um you know fridays on on equations that have, you've known you've lucky enough to know people from school you've grown up in a different world so i like to nurture that um and i love being an actor and i love being in bombay and and it's i i don't like this feeling of you know trying to outdo each other or saying that my way is better than your way because i think we're all driven by different things all almost every actor i can totally understand where they're coming from they're all different they're driven some are driven by money some are driven by fame and that's fine you know and i'm driven by something uh, i suppose that's What? perhaps different i mean sometimes it's uh, i think to find some respectability in in a profession to be good at something to also to make money and there's so many responsibilities we have to look after our children we have to make sure they go to good colleges and you know um whether it's looking after patodi whether it's looking after my mom i i want money is important and we're lucky we're well paid so investing it well working well looking after yourself because you know we're not like doctors and lawyers our faces are important so you know not drinking too much not you know dieting being healthy um but living well and i'm glad karina and i both uh, give a lot of importance to um you know living kind of normal lives and experiencing that as well yes we do we do go on holiday because it's nice to get away from it all um sometimes but you're not a professional holiday i know but you know it's so difficult in the press like earlier now it's fine i think um but you do a whole interview on the film you're working on and then someone would say but and the whole headline would be you know they go on this holiday and that would get all the attention and obviously people reading the paper get fed up of you because they think that that's all there is to you which is why some very smart people don't discuss their relationships uh, and you know i completely agree so if i don't know if you remember but we did an interview about 11 years ago right. and you this was just before kalhona ho released and you talked to me about wanting to direct a film True. and you said that it's probably going to be dark and edgy because you said i have a graphically violent mind yes. yeah. is that still on the cards no that i i think i've changed i've changed quite a lot i now I, i you know i i i i knew someone who said to me that you shouldn't watch this kind of stuff at night you know because it scars the brain and you should watch happier things like you know, i really feel i'd rather go to sleep watching a comedy now like modern family or you know friends or whatever that vibe i i can't i don't like to watch too much disturbing stuff anymore because um i think it weighs on you i started having nightmares 
like I, I dream a lot, I, we all do, but I'm, I always remember my dreams in the morning and either I'm depressed or I'm happy or, or, and sometimes I'm kind of disturbed because there's so much that the subconscious is constantly replaying. Like almost every emotion from, I mean, last night I was dreaming about, you know, not playing cricket as well as my father and how depressing that was and then missing him and then some other graphic. And then there was a monster in the middle of it all, you know, from some movie I'd seen. I think we're all like that. So the images that we... Uh, but at that time you seemed to relish that. Yes, you I did. I it. did. I, I, I loved dark comics, dark movies, you know, dark music. And I think there's, a, there's an age, you know, where um, you find that distracting and you find that attractive. Um, but uh, I'm happy I'm out of that because I think uh, your mood and your outlook can be governed by what you consume also. So, you know, too much of this stuff gets a bit heavy. Um, you know, reading good poetry, good literature sometimes gives you very uh, sophisticated kind of uh, vibe about yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I was trying to read Paradise Lost, which is also pretty monstrous actually when you get into the description of it. But um, yeah, so it's more sophisticated darkness now. Are you a happy person? I think so, yes. I, I am a happy person. Um, I, I'm also a moody person and I used to wake up and it used to take me time to kind of start enjoying the day, which again might be a function of dreams uh, because I'm told that the dreams you have govern your happiness levels in the morning, obviously. Um, I went to the dentist once and he said, uh, do you clench your teeth at night? And I said, no, what a ridiculous thing. I mean, who does? He says, because there's evidence of teeth grinding. So, you know, either wear one of those, you know, what are they called? Right, um, those uh, things, the yeah. plastic things, yeah. Or whatever. So and then I remember waking up in the middle of the night and I caught myself in mid clench and I was really grinding my teeth. So there's lots of things we do that we're not really aware of, you know. So sometimes. you need to be watching like Suraj Bajatya before you go to sleep. Yeah, I wouldn't, you know, I worked there <laughs> and um, it was an amazing experience, but it, I. It, I mean, Surajji kept saying to me, he said, very nice, very nice, Seth. Do it your way, but smile. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, throughout? He said, yes, throughout. <laughs> Maybe that's something we all need to remember. Yes, yeah, yes. As we go through life, just do yeah. it your way, but smile. But yes, I think luckily, you know, there's, everything's good at the moment, and mm. there's nice people around me. I feel very settled personally. You know, Karina's lovely to live with, and um, yeah, I have a lot to be happy about, I feel. So it's good. You had also told me, Seth, that um, in that interview that you have a book. Yes. And you have a wish list of things that you want. And, and at that time it had, you know, some car, I don't remember the model, but it had three annual vacations, it had Armani suits. And, yeah. but, but by then you had got all of that yeah. already. Yeah. Do you still yeah. keep that book? Yeah, it's, it's now become um, a, a sort of shelf of books. They're these moleskin little black diaries. And then I felt really shallow one day because I said, you know, all I'm writing is somebody read this because somebody came over and they said, oh, are these your thoughts and your notes? And I said, yeah, uh, don't look because it's kind of a shock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, suits or this or that. They, but now it's like, um, you know, I, I like this chair or these interiors for this house or this, that. But in order, you know, I actually started making notes on thoughts and um, writing like a bit of a journal um, and, and filling up some of these books with something else apart from just this, you know, they're, they're actually, they're, that's all a disguise for the true nature, which is actually wish lists. But yes, um, that's still happening. I've always written things down. I mean, I'm pretty much on my own doing all this. So it's me and that book. That, that's it. The dreams, hopes aspirations, some thoughts, it's all right. You know, it's not all that shallow. Um, you know, the last thing I wrote in it was, uh, you know, we don't have that much time to achieve what we achieve. That's why sometimes dynasties, you know, are great when two or three generations contribute to the same thing, you know? Because that gives you the time. That gives you the time. So there obviously isn't enough time to, you know, be buggering around. So come on, Sam, <laughs> get on with it kind of thing. Uh, I'm not sure what it means, but, you know, yeah. yeah. Sir, thank you so thank much. You, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Subscribe to The Film Companion and get your film fix.